Today I'm going to talk a little bit about a concept called cycle motion. And there are several posts on my blog about this, but I'm working on finishing up a book outlining this concept. So in this example, we're looking at B harmonic major, which is a major scale with a flat 13, Ionian scale, flat 13, or harmonic minor with a major third. And this is a B harmonic major scale. And I've created a cycle wheel right beneath the scale there. And what you can see is that if you go clockwise, you get diatonic fifths or cycle five. And if you go counterclockwise, you get diatonic fourths or cycle four. Now, regardless of which direction you go, either ascending or descending, the cycle always remains the same. So in this case, clockwise is always cycle five and counterclockwise is always cycle four. So when we go clockwise cycle five will be either ascending by a diatonic fifth or descending by diatonic fourth. And when we do cycle four, the counterclockwise motion of the wheel, we will be ascending by fourth or descending by fifth. So beneath the cycle wheel, I've written a random melody that just goes around that circle in terms of the note choice, but kind of changes randomly the direction of the line. And that's a good way to start practicing this, is just to really look at the wheel and follow the notes either clockwise or counterclockwise and create random lines by deciding which direction you're going to go, either ascending or descending. This will get you familiar with the cycle motion within the seven note set or chord scale. Um, once you're familiar with that, you can create very specific patterns, which is what we'll look at today, a specific pattern using cycle five that goes through each of the modes of the harmonic major scale. So here's the melody that I played at the beginning of the video. This pattern uses cycle five motion and ascends stepwise through the seven modes of harmonic major. So each of these chord scales of the seven can be used over these chord qualities or these chord types. We have B major seven with a flat 13. It could also be a sus major seven since it has a natural 11. And then we have the half diminish, the second mode, which is a very bright and colorful half diminished sound. It's a natural nine and natural 13. Then we have somewhat of a variation of the altered scale. It's like an altered scale, but with a natural fifth and no sharp 11. Then we have a really great sound, in my opinion. This is the minor major seven sharp 11 sound. Next, uh, sus flat nine sound with a natural 13. Um, then we have a really great major seven sound, major seven, sharp five, sharp nine, sharp 11. So pretty, pretty crazy major sound. And then lastly, somewhat of a diminished seventh. This is a diminished seventh with no major seven. It still has the double flat seven, or, but it doesn't have the major seven and it has a flat nine, seven natural nine. So it's a variation of a diminished sound. The seventh chord is diminished. And, um, I usually think of that actually as one of the other modes in inversion. So I might think of it as like maybe E minor 9 sharp 11 major 7 over A sharp, something like that. Uh, but you can use it as a substitute for a diminished chord if you want to see or hear how that sounds. Anyway, this is the pattern and it uses the concept outlined in page one of the PDF. You can download the PDF for free on my website. I'll be releasing a book going into detail using this uh, cycle motion concept. It'll have a lot of different etudes, a lot of different patterns, and various examples of its use. So you can go to mattauto.org and again look at this for free. And once the book is out, if you're interested, you can pick it up. All right, hope you enjoy that. See you on the next one.